Good evening, everyone. It's time to stamp. Don't mind all my scraps up there because I've been using my scraps. Um, of course, my nails are color straight nails. I did some Christmassy ones. Um, if you want those, my friends Mary Burr and Wendy Hoover sell them. So just go into Color Street, type their name. There's this cute little candy cane one that's out. Um, definitely worth trying. So, host code is up here. If you are interested in purchasing them from me, please use that host code because they'll put you in for a drawing and we're going to do a drawing tonight um, for November orders because I go to work Monday. When I go to work on Monday, I'm not done till December 7th. Eighth. <laughs> um, so um, no class next week because of my jobby job. <laughs> um, hi, Erica. Um, tonight we're going to do a drawing, like I said. So if you use your host code and um, your order is less than 150, then you get put in for a drawing for me. If your order's above 150, don't worry about it because about using the host code because you'll already be um, put in for the drawing and you'll receive your own host benefits. Um, so that's awesome about Stampin' Up. Now, as you all know, we have our last chance sale items that are going fast. From So the sale is from November Started November 21st. Things will run out. You'll find things that you wanted from our um, Christmas catalog that are now gone. Um, I've carefully selected some things that are still available. One of the papers I used, I had to switch because it was no longer available. Um, our celebration um, was so cute last month. I'm sorry, our um, our paper pumpkin was so cute last month little house um, um, containers um, so if you want paper pumpkin you have to register by December 10th to get in for the December one and that you can purchase online um, you can just go on to my website and um, sign up for that there are online exclusives I'm showing you some tonight um, best destination kit is out. Um, it's a cute little card kit, um, um, and it has different destinations. It's kind of cute. Um, there's also the rustic calendar. That's a kit that's out. Celebration starts January 4th. I just got my catalog so I'm, today, so I'm happy to look forward to looking at it. But I looked at it online, and there's a lot of lavender, a lot of good stuff for spring, so you'll be happy about that. If you need gift certificates or if you have want lists, please let me know. Um, I can uh, you can purchase gift certificates through me uh, for other people. Um, if they have to be redeemed through me, however, um, and then if you want to leave me with a want list and send people my way if they're shopping for you, that's also something. Hi, Karen. Um, and when a few more people come on, we'll do a drawing. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of the things we're going to be using tonight. However, a lot of them are online exclusives, so they won't show up in our catalogs. So we're in a transition period. We're heading out of our mini catalog, which is our September to December. This is the stuff that is either, that is some of our last chance deals. There are a few things that are carried over. I tried carefully to try and pick things that are being carried over so that you can still order them. Um, but we're heading into, dun, 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 to get yours today, Karen, our mini catalog um, from January to April. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I can show you the cover and that's it. Um, and then our celebration catalog. Ooh, that's where you get free stuff when you purchase stuff. Uh huh. Uh huh. It's so much better in person when you get to look at it. I haven't opened it yet because I was decorating um, my house for Christmas. <laughs> There's only so much time in a day. So I'm going to go through the catalog, show you what we're going to be using today, and then we'll get to making. And when we get a few more people on, we'll do some drawings uh, for, for, for some free stuff. So today we're going to be using 
Um, one of the things that is carrying over in our mini catalog, and these are these wonderful iridescent adhesive dots. Um, they don't look like much here, but they're shiny and pretty, and we're not going to use them on a Christmas card. Um, so remember to look at your embellishments in many ways. These don't have to be Christmas, although they make great Christmas decorations on your trees. Um, they also work well with a floral card that I'm going to be using them with. And that's on page 9 in your mini catalog. We um, are not going to be using this set, but this will look familiar to you in a moment because we're going to be using paper that coordinates with that. That's available online. We were going to use this set, but the paper I had picked out is no longer available, so I'll show you some samples using that. We are going to use this fabulous ribbon that's on page 37. This is a silver and white half-inch sheer ribbon. Um, let me just show it to you now because it's just gorgeous. Look how pretty that is to tie that up and it's half an inch and I've used it on multiple cards that I'll show you. Um, this is something that's continuing so you don't have to worry about it running out if you design it and use it and then you want another ream of it. Look how nice that is and how nice it ties. It's not too wiry. Um, we're going to be using that on cards later. On the third card. That's on page 37. And that is a carrying over item. On page 63, we're going to be using the fabulous deckled edge dies. Look at how many circles come in that. There are 14 dies in that set. Page 63. All right. And believe it or not, that's it out of the holiday mini. Mm -hmm. We're using mostly online exclusives because there's some new stuff I want to show you that's really cool. But then we also use a lot of stuff out of our annual catalog. Our annual catalog runs May to April. So my advice, if you find something in here, just get it. <laughs> because you don't want it to be March and when we start getting towards our last minute deals in March and then they won't have it anymore. So get it when you see it. In the main catalog on page 42, there's this wonderful set called Brightest Glow. It has many, many, what I call inside and out um, sayings. We're going to be using this set uh, for our cards today. So it has a Happy New Year. It has this beautiful Merry Christmas. I love it when they do a font like this where it's cursive and then, and then print. It just looks very nice. But then there's also insides, right? What I call insides. Okay. Um, so we're using that set, and that's on page 42. That one is a cling set. We're going to be using this Bellum Basics 12 by 12 specialty paper on 133. Um, you'll see, if you've ever watched my videos, you know I use that quite frequently. On page 140, we're going to be using my favorite embellishments. These are the Adhesive Beck Sparkle Gems. Um, they come in, there's 120 of them. They come in champagne black and white. I just ordered two more packages when they had that sale um, on supplies. Um, and... Um, I, we're going to be using those today because they're some of my favorite because they go with everything. If you can't find something that go with silver, black, or champagne, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. They go with everything. Um, and then on page 141, we're going to be using these and we get a million of those. Those are the Adhesive Back Sequence Trio. You get Pretty Peacock, Berry Burst, and White. And those are all self-adhesive. You don't have to worry about trying to put glue dots on the back of sequence, which can be a pain. Um, then on our ribbon, ooh, our ribbon, um, we're going to use this really cool herringbone ribbon. And this is a ribbon that is very versatile and I'll show you how to distress it, color it, and we're going to make it whatever color you want it to be. And that's on page 143. I just got to check and make sure I'm not using anything else on that page. Then we're going to be using 
the woven metallic ribbon. Um, the card I, I made as an example used Orchid Oasis, but we're going to be using Sweet Sorbet. Um, and then, oops, don't rip your catalogs like I just did. <laughs> um, then there's this ribbon duo combo pack right here, right next to it. And this is page 144. And there is this really cool lemon lime twist. So you get both these ribbons. We're going to be using that ribbon, the lemon lime twist ribbon. Because it's very close to Parakeet Party. And we're going to use Parakeet Party tonight, which is this nice bright green. Now we're going to be using the stylus shape dies. Those are on page 167. These right here are in low inventory. That means there's not money left. They will be restocked because they're in the main catalog. But if there's something you wanted for Christmas, order them now so that you're not disappointed because they are low inventory right now. And what's nice about these, these have a stitched edging. They have labels, squares, and circles all in one die package. And last thing in our walk through through the catalog is our painted posies embossing folder. Isn't that beautiful? It embosses what looks like a little garden onto your paper. So you thought we were going to do Christmas? Well, for some reason, I got into floral stuff last night and today. So some of our cards are going to be Christmas. Some of them are going to be floral. And the first card we have up is a floral card. And it's a stair card. Okay, it kind of sits like, I'm going to have to tilt you. I'm going to tilt you. It sits like this. So notice I'm not touching it. It kind of sits like this. And I'll show you this side. It sits like this. And it has a little inside. Ooh, isn't that pretty when you stamp the inside? All right. And I'll show you how to make this pretty card. Don't you love the birds? <laughs> the gold birds and the little dragonfly. Isn't it cute? Show you all of this. All right. And there are those iridescent dots I told you. They don't. They don't look like Christmas there, right? They're all about garden. So, the f but I decided because we did this one in Orchid Oasis, we'll do the next one in Melon Mambo in the pink um, to show you the different colors. So online, part of our online exclusives, we have this gorgeous pack of paper. And it's called Meandering Meadows. Um, and if I flipped through here, you would see all these different, beautiful painted sceneries. Um, and, and then on the back side, they have different watercolor prints so you can coordinate with them. But these are absolutely gorgeous sceneries. You could just frame that, right? <laughs> like, look at them. Like, if you like daisies. Um, beautiful scenes. Isn't this beautiful paper? It, it's hard to cut it. It really is. And so now you know why I was playing with this instead of doing Christmas cards as I saw this. Look at how beautiful. I want to be there. <laughs> These are so beautiful. Um, now you know why I went and did played with this instead of doing my Christmas cards. <laughs> Right? I mean, these are just some some of the things. Right? I'm just pulling out. All right. Gosh, look how beautiful that one is. Oh, great for, I think, female birthday cards. Right? Even probably sympathy cards, right? So, um, the one I chose, I've already used all of it up. <laughs> so, you won't see it in that pack. But instead of using the Orchid Oasis, which is that beautiful purple... We're going to use Melon Mambo, which is a bright pink, and you'll see it goes just fine. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut your card in a normal, um, what I call hot dog style or portrait style. Um, so you're going to cut it at four and a quarter, score at five and a half, and then we're just going to fold that over. So that's just a normal card, right? Our normal card, our normal portrait card should have a bone folder and I had one out. I have my clean bone folder just for you guys because usually my I use my bone folders to re-ink my pads so they usually but I have a clean one. I have a clean one and a dirty one. 
So beautiful Melon Mambo. So set that aside. Then we're going to take a piece of Melon Mambo and back it up. Okay. And then you're going to cut this at four. So not four and a quarter, but four this way, right? So four across here. So that's going to measure four on your cutter. If you need me to get out the card editor, let me know. And then when you turn it this way, you're going to cut it at 10, okay? Or that's at 11, right? Um, so you're going to cut that at 10, and then you're going to score a line here at... <laughs> Where are my... Yeah, so you're going to score at 5 and a quarter and 7 and 3 quarters. And this, I have to say, this fold, I did... Um, take get from another demonstrator because I was doing nativity cards and I should show you those with the night divine set I think I showed you them last time but I've you know I use different things but look at how cute that is with a nativity scene right that paper I'm pretty sure sold out the dies were 10% off so if you look in the holiday catalog some of that stuff might be available but don't be surprised if it's gone but that was my favorite set. So I loved that card. So I thought I'd take that style of fold and bring it over to do something different with it. And that was Erica Serwin who made that fold. I like to give credit where credit is due. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our designer series paper. And I've already cut this. Look how beautiful that is. And you can see it, it, can, go, it can go with the Orchid Oasis. It can go with a melon mambo. Look how pretty it is with a melon mambo, right? Um, on how do I know this? How do I know what colors it's going to be good with? On the back of the paper, it'll tell you the colors it coordinates with right here. Balmy blue, basic black, blueberry bushel. So right there, it'll have a list of the colors if you're ever curious. All right, so I cut that piece at five and a half by three and seven eighths. So three and seven eighths this way, right? So you line it up three and seven eighths, cut this way, and then you turn it like this, and then five, five and a half, five and a half, five and a half. Yeah, five and a half. It just doesn't seem right to me. That's all. And so I'm going to take that. I'm an, I use just any adhesive will work. You can use glue. You can use stamp. But look at how pretty that, the other side of it is. It's hard to use the other side. <laughs> and it makes a great little scene, doesn't it? So we're starting. See, this is not a hard card. Everyone's like, oh, it's a lot of work. It's not that hard. Very simple steps. You just got to know your measurements. That's all. Get the measurements offline. And so again, three and seven eighths, which is the same side as this. And I cut off like a bottom piece that matched it. Okay. And by two and one eighth. Okay. And so we're going to put that on there. And we're going to put that right on the front here. So cute. So cute, right? See, you already got the base of your card. Now you're going to take this. You're going to put it on your front. So your front's like this, and it's just going to be a little bit smaller than your front. Great, great. Look at that. How cute is that? Oh, it stands up. You could do whatever you want now. Put whatever saying you want in, on it or whatever, right? But isn't that such a cute card already? And then it still has inside for you to room for you to write. Can you tell I'm excited about that card? <laughs> I think you can. So this is one of our online sets that you can only purchase online. It's not in our catalog. Um, just came out called Garden Meadow. Um, it has all these beautiful little garden um, sayings, little wheelbarrow, floral, 
you know, gardening boots. And it has happy birthday. I chose, I can't imagine having a better friend. That's just a great saying that we don't have a, a sayings like that in a lot of our sets. But there's thinking of you, you know, just a nice hello. And then we also have really cool dies that go with it. So many dies that it takes two sheets of my magnetic paper. So you can create like bushes by cutting this out on the edge of a green piece of paper. You can create grass and hills with grass, right? You can do different kinds of hills. Look at all this, all this stuff you can do. And then of course it has little ones to cut out the images, the boots, everything like that. The wheelbarrow, which I've used, the watering can. And then if you want, it has the one to cut out the stamp for the fence, if you want to stamp the fence, but it also has a little fence there if you want to just cut out a fence. Um, so, and shovels and rakes and all different kinds of things. And then it has this really cool die, which we're going to use for our card. And so I cut that out already. Okay, and see the detail it gives you around the edges, isn't that pretty? So that's going to be our base. Okay, right there. And we're going to stamp. We finally get to stamping. I'm talking so much, but we finally get to stamping. And we're going to stamp this in Melon Mambo, because that's the color of the base of our card. The other one I stamped in Orchid Oasis because that was the base of that card. All right. It's important to keep your ink away from your cardstock. So many times do you ruin your project because you all of a sudden, boom, stick your card in the ink. So remember to shut your ink pad. Shut your ink pad. <laughs> um, shut your ink pad so you don't get any ink where it doesn't belong. I'm just putting my stamp down, not pushing on it hard, letting the ink soak into the paper, right? Can't imagine having a better friend. Nice pink color. Any questions? All right. And then we have that. I'm going to put my ink aside and then we're going to take our wheelbarrow. And you're just going to take a piece of white paper. <laughs> oh, I took all my scrap because I was using all my scrap white. All right. Oh, there it is. Before we do the wheelbarrow, I took our deckled edge die and I cut that vellum. See how cool that vellum is? Um, and it gives you that deckled edge. And we are going to use that as a background to give some interest instead of just putting the uh, wheelbarrow right on. This will give it a little bit more interest, okay? So we used a deckled edge for that die. Now we're going to take our white paper and we're going to stamp a Rooney. We're going to stamp two things while I have my black memento ink out. We're going to stamp our wheelbarrow, which is an, I love photopolymer stamps because you can see exactly where you're stamping. We're going to stamp our wheelbarrow there. I hope you guys had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I really did. I got to cook, which is not always something I get to do on Thanksgiving. And um, uh, then just got to see the Festival of Trees yesterday got to stamp not usual things I get to do all the time and then we're gonna take our inside piece that's cut at four and five and a quarter and we're just gonna take our memento ink again and I took one of these floral sets from the inside and just did that so you have a little decoration on the inside. If you want an inside saying, you can put it on there now. Um, all right, let's get rid of that and that and put that up there. All right, now comes the fun part. 
because we got our wheelbarrow and I'm not going to color the whole wheelbarrow for you. I'm just going to show you some techniques. So these blends are alcohol based blends. Most professional markers are alcohol based. So you got to make sure you recap them quickly or they do dry out. I chose Melon Mambo Orchid Oasis because that's what I'm using in my card. I used light only because I didn't feel like I needed to shade. I'll show you the shading of the wheelbarrow with the balmy blue. Um, and then I did a gray granite, a light black, and a light mossy meadow. Okay, so took the Melon Mambo and I colored the big, I'm going to bring it down. Hi, Mary. I got my color straight on. Let's see, <laughs> it's an older color straight. And so I'm just going to show you how easy it is to just, everything is nice and smooth. There's no lines. It all colors in real nice. So this is the Melon Mambo, right? Then what I did for the Orchid Oasis, and I took the light, is I actually took the nib tip. So there's two different tips. I just showed you the brush tip. This is the nib tip. And because this is so, I just dotted. And it gives it a more, what do I want to, organic look, natural look. And I just dotted there for those flowers right let's see can you see that and so let me show it over here because we're going to need to do it here right what are these probably gladiolas does anyone know flowers because I'm not very good at flowers I bet you Erica would know but these are probably, these could be a couple of things. But see, I'm just dabbing. Isn't that cute? And then I used the mo light mossy meadow. Just see how that's a brush tip. And you kind of do that, you use that as a paintbrush almost. See how m professional looking that looks? Doesn't leave any lines. Then I'll show you how to shade the wheelbarrow because there is shading techniques where there are. And so there's that. Let me move over the wheelbarrow for you. And so what I did is I started with a dark first and I used dark balmy blue. And now my dark balmy blue does need some love and that need I need a new one. If you use it a lot, you'll need to update. So I went in between where I thought there would be shadow and there's probably a lot of shadow around here, right? Around these florals. I did shadow on the top. And then I went down because this is the darker one and I did the base just like that. Okay, then I took the one, the lighter one, and then I pull up that color so it's a gradient. And you keep going over it, and you blend it. It's hard to color when you're not looking directly over it. And wherever there's darker lines, you're going to shade, pull. And now you can see there's a little bit of shading on the bottom of that barrel. Isn't that cool? All right. And then all I did, I'm not going to show you the rest of the florals because you saw me do those. I took my light gray granite and I did the poles, you know, or the you know, the metal wear around there. And then, what did I do dark around here? And then I did gray granite around there. Okay, and then I took my dark gray granite and I did the handles. See, 
similar, but, and if you wanted to, you can do some darker on there. And see how that adds shade there. Isn't that cool? So that's got a little shade. And then I did my light black around the wheel. The black black is very black. So I did the light black. So there's a light black and a dark black. Okay, so I think you get the picture. And then I cut it out and by the magic of tech of, of Facebook live, <laughs> we have one cut out. So cute. And see the shading of the wheelbarrow. Isn't that pretty? Right. And so now we're going to adhere our card together and we're done. It's not that hard, right? So I'm going to back you up more. We're going to go to the inside of our card, put some adhesive down there, I, my advice is use the adhesive that you like, there's sometimes you want to use other adhesive. So you have your little writing area, and now we have your step front that will sit nicely for you when you have a card. And then we're going to take our piece here. That's going to be our base, and I, I put mine real towards the bottom because I wanted, I wanted more um, of the paper behind it. So I put it as close to the bottom as I could. So I'm just going to put some adhesive just on the very bottom because you don't want to put it up here because then it will close the card, right? And then you won't be able to open it like you want. Okay. Can't imagine having a better friend, right? And then you're going to take your vellum. Remember to only put adhesive behind what's not going to show. And so I know my wheelbarrow is going to be in the middle. So I'm not going to put any adhesive on the edges. And my wheelbarrow, and this is off to the side just a little bit. Okay. Uh-oh. Oh, see, that's the adhesive. I thought I had ink in my hand. That's the adhesive. So it's a good thing my wheelbarrow is going there, right, to cover up the adhesive. <laughs> so then I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back of my wheelbarrow. Oh, delphinium. See, I knew Erica might know. <laughs> I don't know plants. <laughs> I know human anatomy. I don't know plants. <laughs> I had to take one botany course for my biology degree, and that was it. Um, and so I'm not very, and I focused on the medicinal properties when I was doing it. So there's, isn't that cute already? And now all we, all we have to do are embellishments. So it didn't take long. And if you didn't, if you chose something different than coloring, that fold doesn't take long to do. So it's a nice fold um, and not hard to do. So let's show you these. How cute are those? These are very flat. So they travel, or they mail, they travel nicely. They mail nicely. See how flat they are? But they're gold. Um, and they're hard. They're, they're harder than just a sequins. Um, so they're really cool. And, this set is um, adhesive back dragonflies and birds. So what I did was I put one bird flying in here. And I put another bird already sitting in the tree. Oh, cute. And then I put a dragonfly down in the area of the garden, right? Right there. Don't, aren't those pretty? Pretty, pretty, pretty. So those are also online exclusives. So you want to check out the online store. Um, these will not be in a catalog. And then these are the Christmas ones that I said you don't have to always use for Christmas. I love these. And I'm so excited they're carrying over. These are the iridescent adhesive back discs. 
Um, they have all different colors and they had balmy blue, which was in there and they have green. So I thought they would be kind of cute, you know, being put on here. And so I put a little green there, put a little kind of purple and purple pink, the balmy blue up here, maybe one, Oop, don't drop them. You should be using your take your pick tool. If you don't have a take your pick tool, um, you need one. They're not expensive. They have different ends. They have this flat tip end, which can go under things. I use it for getting my paper off when I glue something and getting in between and it'll help remove that paper. Um, but it is also good for picking up adhesives. Um, and so what I mean by that, you just slide under that and you can put an adhesive right down there. Also, then on the other side, if you twist that off and then lock it, you have a nice sharp poker tool. It has a pick-me-up um, piece here, which has uh, putty. So if you're picking up sequins, let me show you. If you're picking up sequins, so you can just pick them up and they'll pick them up for you. Can you see that? And this comes with two heads when you order that. So if one runs out, you get a second one already in the same package. And then you also get another head that goes on here with two different size, um, oh, the word escapes me, styluses, you know, so it's very cool, very cool tool to have. And then, uh, and then there's also different attachments. Notice that when I lose my, this is a clear envelope. Um, hi, Joanne. Um, when I don't have room for, when I lose my packaging for my, uh, um, stuff like this. I put, I use one of these clear envelopes. This is how I store our, all my cards once they're made so they don't get anything on them. Um, those clear envelopes, um, I just restocked on. Okay. So there's the start of our card. I saw Joanne just got on. You're part of our drawing tonight. So I wanted to wait till at least someone got on from that's being drawn <laughs> um, for free stuff. And so instead of the Orchid Oasis ribbon, I chose the Sweet Sorbet ribbon, which is actually a little more pink than it is red. And so it's this really pretty thin metallic ribbon. And we're just going to tie a little bow there. And then we're going to put that on our wheelbarrow with a glue dot. I hope, did everyone have a good Thanksgiving? All right, so let's let's solve this once and for all. What is the ultimate pie <laughs> for Thanksgiving? Because I can tell you, I made my aunt's blueberry pie and that was the first thing to go. <laughs> um, it's like a blueberry cr sweet cream pie. And, uh, um, but I, I'm a pumpkin girl through and through. I don't like pumpkin pie flavoring of stuff too much, but I love pumpkin pie. And there's your card. Really cute, right? Cute set. So that's the um, Garden Meadow set with a Garden Meadow set die. The beautiful meandering meadow paper. And these embellishments, all which are online exclusives, these which are staying from the mini catalog. Yeah, pumpkin. Although, I don't know. Can you go wrong with any pie? <laughs> All right, so that was card number one. And so, Joanne, we also did it in Orchid Oasis. I, I'm a fan of the Orchid, I think. I think I like the Orchid better than the Melon Mambo, but they both go well. Same paper, same coloring. Let me know which one you like. Squash pie. Stop. <laughs> All right. So that is card number one. Let's get to card number two. Card number two. So I had, I put out, what do you guys want to see? Because I want to make what you guys want to see. And someone said, show me how to use up some scrap paper. Well, it wasn't really scrap paper. 
um, um, but it, it does show you a way to use it. So this is number two, I told you. What? <laughs> I laugh at everything. <laughs> what is squash pie? Is it just like, is it like pumpkin pie? Is it sweet like pumpkin pie? Um, cause pumpkin is a squash, right? Um, and, and so we're using this paper, which is an online exclusive paper. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's what I was saying. Pumpkins in the squash family. Um, using that ribbon, um, that white ribbon, I'll show you how to make it smaller and distress it. We're using, um, that folder, the deckle that circle, and the translucent bundle. So right here is the designer paper and I'll show you what we did with that. All right. I know it's strange. You expected Christmas cards. The last one is a Christmas card and it's basically a way to use up, use your designer Christmas paper, um, in a way where all you need to do is put a focal point on. All right. So we're using this gorgeous, bright parakeet party. Isn't that just a great, color. It's nice and bright. Um, and so we're using that as a base. And so this one is what I call hamburger style or landscape. And it's cut at five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Okay. Um, so we did that already. And then the next thing we do is we take our layers. And so for this card, you can use the other side of it, and I'll show you what I mean by the other side. You can use this and do the reverse of the card, but I'll show you how to make this from scratch. Scratch, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to take a piece of uh, designer paper. This is normally 12 by 12, but a lot of times we cut these down. This is four by five and a quarter, I believe. No, this is four by five four by five. No, this is three and three quarters. So this is three and three quarters by five. And what you're going to do to get that diagonal shape, see, is I'm lining up one in here and one in here, right in the track, right in the track where the cutter goes. So corner to corner. And that's how you get your corners. It's much easier to do without a camera. That looks right, doesn't it? I can't see over there. <laughs> Let's hope. And then you cut through. Okay. And then you have your piece here and you have your piece here. Okay. So you can use this piece for one card and this piece for one card. All right. So now I'm going to take this piece and to make it a little more interesting, I'm going to run your the designer series paper through an embossing folder. Yeah, you can still run those through an embossing folder. <laughs> And the embossing folder I'm going to use as part of the trio of embossing folders that I've showed you online. Again, online exclusive. Um, or we should say exclusively online. That might be a better way of calling it. And we're just going to put it in there. And then I'm going to show you your Stampin' Up! embossing machine. You ready? Avert your eyes if you get seasick. So all you need is tab one, your folder, because this is a 3D embossing folder, and four. And that's it. So the thicker folders, you only need those two. Okay. And then you're running it through. And it shakes a little, so I apologize. And then you get to see. And while we're here, I'm going to run something else through the embossing, embossing folder. So I'm going to show you. Isn't that cool? It almost makes like a linen design on it, on that designer series paper. So to make your designer series paper even more interesting, you can do that. The other side of that is that is like a washed parakeet party or lemon lime twist. Isn't that pretty? But you can do that to make your designer paper even more special. Since we're going to use another embossing folder, the one I showed you in our main catalog. Remember this one? Mm -hmm. Makes it look like a garden. We're going to take a piece of our Berry Burst 
Berry Burst is this gorgeous color right here. It's like a um, purple pink. <laughs> purple and pink. It's definitely a darker pink with blue hues in it. And we're going to be seeing... Notice I don't care about this end because we're going to be seeing because our piece of paper is going to go across here. So I want this part decorated the most. And so that's what I'm focusing on when I'm putting this through is this right here because that's what we're going to see the most. So I'm going to pull that like that. Okay. And I don't care that that's hanging out because we're not going to see this part. Hi, Jennifer. Everyone had time to craft during their Thanksgiving. Did you have time to craft, Jen? Let's see how beautiful that is on that berry burst. Now, berry burst goes excellent with, guess what it goes well with? Pretty peacock. Look at how pretty that pretty peacock is. And so we're going to put that right on here. And I only put a little border around it. So you can see a little bit. And the reason I chose pretty peacock, because in the designer paper, there's pretty peacock, there's parakeet party, and then there's the berry burst. So it all coordinates when you throw it together. So Stampin' Up! coordinates everything for you. And I was like, mm, that's nice, but we could use a little bit of detail here. So I said, mm, we can use another piece of scrap. And you always have scrap of your glimmer paper. Look at this glimmer paper. Have you gotten this, Jen? It's got this glimmer paper. Let me see if I have it next to me. Is, nope, that's not it. Yep, this is it. So it has, it's 12 by 12, and it has Highland Heather, he, Highland Heather, Petal Pink, and Pretty Peacock. So there's your Pretty Peacock. Your Highland Heather is that nice medium purple, not light, not dark, kind of medium purple. Isn't that pretty? And then your Petal Pink, which is that orangey pink, that peachy pink. All right, that's also an online exclusive. But you only need a little strip of this for your card, right? And so add interest in your scraps by running them through an embellishment. I mean, I'm sorry, in a folder. And then adding a little bit of sparkle on the edge, like an embellishment. And how you do that, you just take your adhesive, roll it on down, and then put that right... And here you want to leave some off the edge, right? But you want to, and I'll show you what I mean, off the edge so you can cut it. So you want to line it up. Oop, oop, sorry. I'm making this look way more difficult than it is. That's one of my specialties, making things look harder than they are. So just put your strip there, okay? You just want to make sure this part is even. And then you're going to take your paper snips. And you're just going to snip in the right in the direction of the triangle, right? Do I need to move that back a little? I need to move that back a little because you want... You want a clean edge. You don't want that edge. What I mean by clean edge, you'll see. That was square. See, so you want a nice pointy edge. And then you just go like this and cut like that. And now you have a nice little strip on your designer paper. Easy peasy. Then you're going to take that wonderful
cardstock that you've already embossed. Isn't that beautiful? And then you're going to stick that on there. And it's got a very thin border. So be careful. You can make your borders whatever you want them to be. But I made mine very thin. So I didn't want it all to be pretty peacock. And now I'm going to adhere here, adhere here. And then we're going to lay this down right in the corner to cover up everything else. See how pretty? Isn't that pretty? I just love the colors. Love the bright colors. And then we're going to put that right on here. And then we're almost done with our card. Just have a little stamping to do. All right. So we're going to put that on our parakeet party. Pretty peacock on parakeet party. Say that twice. Fast. All right. Then we have your base of your card. Now we're going to take that same deckled edge circle that we took to cut out the vellum in our last card. And we're going to cut out a piece of white. A basic white. And I've already done that. Now we get to do the fun part, and that's stamping. And these are, um, pretty sure they're distinctive stamps. And I did the bigger one in Berry Burst, and the leaves in Parakeet Party. Notice I'm carrying over the same colors that are in the paper, because that'll make it nice. And then, I'm just going to move some things, some Calypso Coral, see, Calypso Coral. All right, I'm going to move you back a little bit. Jen, what's your pie? What pie do you eat on Thanksgiving? So I did this in Berry Burst. Isn't that pretty? This is the translucent florals. This is in your mini catalog. I didn't show you that. In your mini catalog, in the holiday catalog, it is being carried over. It has dyes, gorgeous dyes. You can make all the make build a flower with some of these dyes. You can cut out stamped images. There's even a vertical, what we call vertical thing, which is nice rather than everything across. Um, so there's that. And then what I did was I took Parakeet Party and and then I made a mistake. So then I added some Calypso Coral. And I'm just throwing some leaves down. around the edges and then I got ink up in here <laughs> so then mince meat mince meat when um, we used to have that at my aunt's um, on my dad's side I liked it and so I just threw in some a few Calypso Coral around the edges. Um, you can overlap these. They are translucent. And then you just make a cute little circle of flowers. Isn't that cute? This is a great stamp set. It's very forgiving. Um, so I like this one. And now move your ink away from your cards once you're done stamping. We have one more thing to stamp and that's the sentiment. So we're going to set that there. And so you're going to take a strip of your parakeet party. Okay, and then you're going to use your embossing buddy, wherever that might be. And we're going to use some Versamark. Um, using the congratulations. Oh boy. And then I'll show you a really cool way to use your paper for... Christmas cards and I'll show you the ones I did in the Christmas card and the Christmas paper that's no longer available So then I did it in a different Christmas paper to show you 
just in case. So I just stamped that in verse mark. Then we're going to add white embossing powder because I like white on color. On this one, you can use, you know, anything. You could use copper, black. Um, I like white. And there's white in the paper, so. And then I'm just going to knock that off. And then I'm going to use our heating tool. Our heating tool is pretty cool. It's got two levels of heating. One, um, level one is kind of a drying mode. Level two is um, for embossing and gets hot. So keep your fingers away. So I'm going to go for two. And then you'll notice a change. Oh, it's my pleasure. I just try and show different things, different cards, different things to do with cards. Stuff that isn't too hard because no one wants... If you're like me, you want a card that looks nice, but you don't want to spend forever on it, right? There are some cards that I spend a long time on, but it's, it's rare that I spend more than an hour on a card, right? And then there's our congratulations. And then all I did was, there are punches for this, right? I eyeballed it. I eyeballed it, folded these together, and did a little snip across for you. So you can just eyeball it instead of, instead of using a punch for everything. So now I'm going to put that down with dimensionals. Dimensionals. I opened up new packs of dimensionals because I was using all kinds of old dimensionals and I finally got through my stash. So I'm using new sheets of dimensionals today. <laughs> it's the little things, right? And then I kind of put that like that. And I'll put one on the end here, just on one end, because I want this to go on top of this and so do go like that right maybe up there yeah okay and then let's get into that ribbon because that's kind of cool what I did so you're like where did you get calypso coral ribbon we don't have calypso coral ribbon I made it <laughs> and this is your lemon lime ribbon which is very close to a parakeet party, right? Lemon, lime, and parakeet are very close. So you can kind of use them interchangeably, kind of. Um, and so I took this white ribbon, right? And I took a piece. I'm, I'll just show you on a small piece because I already have it cut. And I took our... Stampin our blends and you can color it any color you want See how you can color that any color you want and I wanted mine to be not just a solid color So then I added in the dark with it um, And so that's why it looks like that. I wanted it distressed and dark, right? And I was like hmm, this is too thick for my card even though it's good for other things right so what I did was and I, and I love it when ribbon is frayed. So imagine I also took my darker one and put some dark on there, right? Whatever. All right. Anyway. And then blended that in. And then you can blend that in, right? You can make it any colors that you want. Just remember your color wheel so you don't, don't end up with brown. Right? And so I cut it down the middle. Right, and then you fray it, and then you get a nice piece of distressed frayed ribbon in the color you want. So, what I did is I took a little piece of that, and I tied it with, and I took my little lemon lime twist ribbon, and I just tied them together. I love playing with ribbon. You've no, you know that I have. If you know me, 
or if you've seen my craft room, I, it is true. I do have a custom made ribbon wall. <laughs> I'll show it to you if you want to see it. <laughs> it's very cool. And yes, of course I keep it in. And so, and then you just have that. Isn't that, doesn't that add just, you know, a bunch of stuff. Um, at the end, I'll show you the custom made ribbon. Well, we're going to go a little bit late today because I guess my cards are a little more in depth. Do you guys want to do a drawing before I do the next card? We'll leave the drawing for the end. Leave the drawing for the end. Make it easy, easier. The end isn't, the last card is actually an easier card probably than the first couple, but it's. It's actually a way of making four cards with your scraps. And so look at the sheet. Look at how many adhesive back sequins you get. Look at how well they go with everything. We're done with our card. We're done. So I just took, you know, some of the pink and some of the, and of course it's pretty peacock. And then maybe one, maybe a smaller one there. A white one kind of here maybe a lighter pink one there yeah and then there and there you go there's a cute little card so that's using just using some of your designer series paper if you want to use it up or use some scraps so there's that Whew. all right we're in the home stretch. So that's card number two. Did I do a lot of talking there or something? Because it seems like that one took a little bit longer. <laughs> Don't forget to put your white inside. We won't take time to do that tonight. Because um, we got drawings to do and one more card. So I was all set to show you all these different versions of this card with this paper. And the paper is no longer available. So let me show you the cards so this it was with the shiny paper I don't know if you got that this one is using Mary's trees stamp set which is still available this one is using the truck stamp set which is um, online exclusive still available has a punch that goes with it if you just wanted to put words on yours um, this is the Ooh, what is it called? More Wishes stamp set. That's still available. This one I actually stamped last class last week just to show you how this stamped. This is one that's going away. Could be sold out. I don't know. Um, but this one is a great set um, in the mini catalog. And this is extra for my paper pumpkin. So I just threw them together. And then this one I used... The same paper, right? So using up your scraps, using up the same paper. Um, and I used the dies. And where did I put those dies? And those dies are called the Patchwork Pieces dies. And these are in the main catalog. Again, I use that from the paper um, pumpkin. And I'm using that really cool ribbon I told you about in the beginning. Don't worry, we're going to be using it on a different paper. So we're going to be making some with different paper. And this is the patchwork that comes with the two different dies that's in the main catalog. I use this one. So basically you can put a scrap piece there, scrap there, scrap there, and cut them out in different and just layer them together. Um, this one always remind me of ocean or sea or something, but I, it looks cool like that. So that's that die. I'm just showing you the cards and then um, that I was going to make you. <laughs> but then I'll show you the card that I am going to make you. And we'll sh I'll show you why you get all these. It's because you make all these backgrounds with your scraps. Okay. And so those were the ones I had ready for you guys. <laughs> but now I get to play with them myself. And you can throw whatever. So this is a technique that you can use on for birthday cards. If you have birthday paper for sympathy cards, for baby cards. So whatever paper you have, whatever designer series paper you have, um, that's 
basically what you're going to make. So we're going to make the vintage Santa one. Isn't he cute? Just using the vintage Santa paper that is still in line. There is a vintage stamp set, but this is just paper that I'm using. And I'm again, yeah, um, again, I'm using, um, so the paper is online exclusive. I'm using the dies I showed you from the back of the catalog that have the circle dies, um, the tags and the squares together. That beautiful ribbon, um, sheer ribbon, and then my favorite adhesive back gems. All right, and then we're using that one stamp set that's in the main catalog with all those different things. So this paper, I just cut out that Santa. So let me show you the paper. It's still available. I checked it because when I went to check the other one, it wasn't available. And I said, oh no, what am I going to use? And I was like, oh, I haven't used this vintage Santa paper yet. It's really cute. So that's the vintage Santa paper, right? And I, I, I like him, but there's this Santa and there's this Santa. And so you can cut them all out. The back is a gorgeous red, like, damask. Um, and then it, there's, like, a kind of a copper clay one and green. And then these beautiful... Um, Scenes for Christmas, like vintage Christmas. All right, and so this is the paper we're going to be using. And I'll show you what I did with it. How cute is that? The little stockings we're not using. I almost used the little stockings. Look at how beautiful some of this is. It's like vintage wallpaper. Look at the holly. Yeah. What else? Is that it? I think that's it. So, now you know where I cut my Santas out of, and I just freehanded them, but the dies that are in the catalog, they actually coordinate, all right, um, and can cut out some Santas for you if you get the die set. Um, so basically what you're going to do is you're going to cut some basic white thick cardstock. So if you're using cardstock for bases, you want the thicker one so they stand up. I cut a few at four and a quarter, scored at five and a half, and I cut a few landscape, cut at five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Okay, so I just have a pile of them here. I'm going to throw those to the side. Then I picked out four pieces of designer paper that were different enough Okay, um, what I mean by that is they weren't all green and you could, you know, you're kind of patchworking them, right? Um, so you don't want them exactly the same. And if you don't like one, you could use the other side, right? Um, and that's what's nice about the designer paper. I loved this one. And I loved this one and they happen to be on opposite sides, so I used <laughs> both of those. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut these pieces exactly the same. So you get four pieces, and now you're going to make four cards. Okay. So these are these are um, at four. These are already cut at four by five and a quarter. So your basic mat size. So you're going to take one piece, and you're going to cut it at two and a half. So you go over to your two and a half mark. Can you all see that? So you're at your two and a half mark. Okay. And you're just going to cut. And um, this was from another lady, so I um, I don't think she's a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, um, but she was doing different cards. And then you're going to take this piece right here, the long piece, and then you're going to cut two. Right? Two inches. Make sure you cut then you're going to put that piece down like that, okay? So, like that. Then you're going to take this piece and you're going to cut it by two and three quarters. 
So two and a half, two and three quarters right there. And so that piece is the just a bit bigger than the bottom. And that's kind of what you want. You want a bigger piece here, a little bit smaller, taller piece here, and like that. And then you're going to create a pile like this, okay? Then you're going to take your next piece, and you're going to do the same exact thing. So excuse me while I cut. Um, isn't this little gingerbread in these cups so cute? So this one's two. So that was at two and a half. Then we cut it two. I'm going to put that there. Put that there. And then this one, two and three quarters. Pretty easy. That's not right. You should know that's not right. <laughs> that was three and three quarters. So there's there's two, two and a half, two and three quarters. It's it's easy to slip up. <laughs> All right. Boom, boom. You can kind of see what I'm doing, right? And then you're just gonna shift them, right? So two and a half. I should have pre-cut some of these for you. So two and a half. Don't worry, we're not gonna make all four cards. This piece at two. Boom, boom. This piece at two and three quarters. I think you guys got it, right? It'll become so easy. And then this beautiful piece that no one ever wants to cut. I just want towels, that kitchen towels with this on it. Or, you know, obviously plates. And it's just beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. So two, boom, boom. And two and three quarters. Two and three quarters. Done. All right. Now, you have your pile of your four pieces. You leave one alone. <laughs> you take this one, you move one. You take this one, you move two. You take this one, you move three. Right? And so now you have a pattern there. Okay? And you're going to take your basic... And you can change them around. I often do. Um, so you're going to take your first piece and you're going to put it here. Okay? And this is where you might want to use glue the first time. And then I put this piece here. Okay? Right next to it. Make sure I have the right edging. Right? That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to take my green piece and I'm going to put it here. And then I'm going to take my cute little candy piece and put it right there. So cute, right? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my red Santa with this one to show you different. And then there you have a cute little background. That's very interesting. It shows off your designer paper. And if you had little scraps, you can just cut them into those sizes and not even cut the four pieces like that, right? As long as it cut, turns into four by five and a quarter, right? Because that's your mat size. I'm going to stick that down. And like I said, you can always use the other side of things too. But when you cut your paper, like when you cut this paper, you want to make sure it's cut in the right direction, right? Um, so that you're not putting something like this on there. You always want to cut in your right direction. See how easy these are? And then you just put these together, and now you have four. So you could do this with Halloween paper, with autumn paper, with birthday paper, with any kind of paper that you want. And you, you know, as long as they coordinate together, you know, you get a pack of paper and usually everything coordinates. And you cut them in but to pieces like this, and then you make a nice background. Now what's easy with a nice background is to put a focal point. And whenever you're like, oh, I need a focal point, a circle is a great focal point. So I just cut out one of these circles right here. And notice the dotted edging. And this is where I used that um, set Brightest Glow from the main catalog, which has all those great holiday greetings. So you have Seasons Greetings, Happy Holidays. This is one that I said has the insides and the outsides, right? Yeah, no problem. 
Um, some of this I get from other demonstrators, right? And I just apply it to what we do. And so now I'm using cherry cobbler because cherry cobbler is in the paper. That's how I decide, you know what? I'm going to put it over here. I can always change it, right? All is merry and bright because what I think I'm going to do on this one, because, because the green is over here. I didn't want to put a green Santa there. I will put my red Santa over here, right? Yeah, that looks better. And so I just got him out of paper. And your card's almost done, right? <laughs> Card is almost done. So it looks fancier than it is. So I'm just going to glue him down. Right? Oh, we're going to glue him down. You can pop this up with pop dots if you want. Or, I'm sorry, with dimensionals if you want. We're going to glue him down right here. And I kind of put him there. Right? Isn't he cute? And then all we're going to do is take that gorgeous sh sheer ribbon. Yeah, I like the rustic field too. But um, now you know, like, my favorite card from the other one was using this tree set. But you can do it with that paper. Everyone has red and white and green paper, right? <laughs> so do it with that paper, you know. Um, and I just cut out a tree. We use that circle as a focal point. Put a saying from the set and tied the same ribbon so you can make a lot of cards a lot of your christmas cards quickly with this technique right look at this how beautiful and just by adding these little accents with the ribbon and um and the embellishments, it, it just makes it pop, right? And then a glue dot. And then we do our drawing after we do pop some embellishments on, and then we're going to do a drawing and see what Joanne wins. Because <laughs> Joanne's in the drawing. If you guys know my drawings, I usually draw everyone's name. <laughs> so if you purchase something with me, you usually get a prize. Um, usually, uh, and then my favorite embellishments. So don't worry. I know these are almost gone, but I have two more packages. Look at how beautiful those are. And like I said, they're silver, black, and champagne. And if you can't find anything to go with those, um, and I thought champagne was nice because it's champagne is kind of a vintage feel. So I'm going to put some champagne there and there's different sizes, maybe champagne up there. And then maybe some silver. Yeah, it's because there's silver in the ribbon. Um, maybe a smaller silver. And then maybe another silver down here. Good. Right. And then look at how cute. I know you already have... You could even give these as a gift, as a set, if a friend doesn't make cards and they like your cards and they want some to give out, you can make these as a set, as a Santa set, <laughs> right? With that, just by using that paper. All right. So we got those done. All right. Any questions for me? Now we're going to do a drawing. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And if you don't like what you get when I draw you, <laughs> let me know. We can always work something out. All right. So for prizes, I have a ribbon that's similar to the one we're using, but it has, so it has a silver edge with a very vanilla inside. And so that we have that one. Then we have the seam binding, you know, the small seam binding ribbon that's just white. So you have very vanilla and silver and white. We have this four pack of inks where we have the retired Mango Melody, the new Orchid Oasis, the Daffodil Delight, and the Fresh Freesia, kind of springy colors. We have, this is what you can choose from, 
the black matte dots that are retired. Those are just good. There's big and small. These are the faux sea glass accents. Yeah, we got good stuff. We have a package of the watercolor um, pencils assessment. Um, and those are the colors there and that one because it's package two. We have a Wink Estella. We have a Blackberry Bliss brand new ink pad or a celebration stamp from last celebration called In the Country. So you can choose from any of these if and when I draw. All right. So I put you in a baggie instead of a cup this time. <laughs> so the first winner is Cora. So Cora gets to pick what she would like. She's not on, so uh, she gets to pick whatever's left. If you're on, you get first dibs. That's why I do it. My second person is Diane. And I don't think Diane's on. So she will get second choice after Cora. And then I have a feeling this is going to be Joanne. And it's Joanne. <laughs> All right. And so, Joanne, um, let me know which one you would like or if you have questions. Um, and uh, I think you're still, you're in Florida, right? And I, I can ship it out to Zephyr Hills. Um, uh, let me know which one you want. And hope everyone had a wonderful time. I had a good time making these cards. Um, and, and again, if you order with me, use the host code, put you in for a drawing. If your order's above 150, don't worry about that. Um, you'll be put in for a drawing anyway, even if you don't use the host code and you'll get your own rewards. Next week I will be on call. So it is highly doubtful I'll be able to do a class, uh, but the weekend after hopefully we'll be able to have a class. Thanks, Erica. Thanks for attending. Faux sea glass. All right, you got that. I'll send that out to you, Joanne. Okay. Have a good night, everyone. God bless. Take care. Um, have a safe week, and I'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye.